guys welcome back to the bluegrass on this glorious july day uh i think it's about 90 degrees that's what my buddy jake said it was and uh jake's up here picking up his dog larry today now larry is what's called a silver lab and the reason we're making a video about uh larry today is because he was in my understanding labrador retriever types video series that i did a couple of weeks ago and man, there is nothing like a silver lab to bring uh, email experts out, <laughs> out of the woodwork. And so I got a lot of emails about these guys. Uh, some people asking me what it was, some people telling me what it was, some people telling me that I ought not feature them on my channel. I mean, I just got a lot of emails. So I thought, hey, look, we'll just make a video about it. Now, I'm not claiming to be the world's foremost uh, uh, genetic expert on Labrador retriever types in history. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you from my perspective, what I've seen, uh, and uh, kind of how the basic argument goes as it relates to these uh, silver dogs, right? So I'll do that while we're walking and talking. Come on, Larry, get up here. Now it's kind of hot, and so uh, Larry, he gets kind of gets a little tired, <clears throat> but uh, we'll try to do the best we can. So now, uh, first thing, what is a silver lab? Well, uh, a silver lab, you know, at least in the States, uh, is registered. You can register them. You, can, you can't put them in a confirmation ring. Uh, you can enter them in certain hunt trials and stuff, but they're registered as a, uh, as a chocolate lab. And so what the thinking behind the dogs is, is that they have, uh, you know, they're a dilute version of a chocolate lab. So in other words, they have these uh, recessive genes that pop up in certain bloodlines. And as long as you mate dogs together that have those recessive genes, uh, then what you end up with is a dog that looks silver. Okay. This all started, uh, as far as I can tell, in, in the 1950s. And uh, ever since the 1950s, when these guys first started popping up, you've kind of had uh, two schools of thought. One school of thought, and that's mainly from the breeders who breed these dogs, say that they are just a chocolate lab with a set of dilute genes. Dilute just means watered down, right? So it just doesn't have as much pigment. Now, the other group of people, and this is most of the people in the lab fancy, the, the, you know, the people that are involved with the breeding and the maintenance of the Labrador Retriever breed, most of those people will say that this is, a, uh, this is not a purebred Labrador Retriever, okay? And I'll be honest with you, from being in the dog business for a whole long time, whenever I look at a silver lab, come on Larry, get up here. Whenever I look at a silver lab, yes, I do see a lot of uh, Weimaraner in them. Uh, come on, up, 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 up. To me, when you train them, they have a lot of the same characteristics. Let's go that uh, Weimaraners have. They have a tendency to bark a little too much. They're a little bit nervous. They have the kind of same eye set. They have a lot of the same gait patterns that Weimaraners have. Uh, but do I know that that's true? No, I don't know that that's true, right? Because I've heard an equally valid argument that uh, these dogs, the reason they ended up gray is because since Labrador Retrievers, you know, up until about 1916 or 1917, the Labrador Retriever Registry wasn't really closed. And uh, like, um, so there was other kinds of dogs that were introduced into lab uh, bloodlines all the time. Chesapeake Bay Retrievers being one of those kind of dogs. And the Chesapeake Bay Retriever carries that same dilute uh, gene that uh, Weimaraners carry. So you have basically three ideas about how these dogs came to be this color. Number one, and I would say the most dominant one that I've ever heard, and the one that really, I'm, I'm, to me, seems like it's probably true, uh, is that they were uh, crossbred with Weimaraners in the 1950s. Okay, uh, now I don't know that that's true, and there's been some uh, testing that they've been doing here lately that the, the Silver Lab breeders will reference, and it says, you know, maybe not. So I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's what I've always thought, but I could be wrong. Come on, Larry, up, up. Now the second theory, is that you have sometimes what's called spontaneous uh, mutation. So you can have a breed of dog, and uh, that breed of dog can just kind of, you know, just mutate, and certain characteristics can pop up, and uh, it just all of a sudden becomes normal. So you had, uh, you had bloodlines of dogs, and these kind of dogs, you know, the, they didn't have these recessive genes for this co coat coloration, and then all of a sudden you do. Okay, now, again, I'm not a genetic expert. I don't know, you know. That doesn't seem super likely to me, but definitely, definitely not uh, outside the realm of possibility, you know? Now, uh, kind of a third theory that I've heard is that since Labrador Retrievers did not have a close registry, and they used to like mix them with other kinds of dogs, one of the dogs that got mixed with Labrador Retrievers a lot was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and they do carry that dilute uh, coat color uh, variation uh, like, uh, like Weimaraners do. And that it just was a, a chance occurrence 
that over the course of generations, dogs with these particular genetic tendencies met together, the bloodlines met together, and those genes got concentrated in the 1950s, okay? And that, you know, when people tell me that, that makes sense to me too. So, look, I don't know, you know, I, I, up, 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 up. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that they, uh, the, how, how, that, how they originated, right? Uh, so let's talk about what I do know about them, okay? What I do know about them is they have some good tendencies, and they have some tendencies that uh, generally don't make me super happy. Now, one of the things that I'll notice, and I've done quite a few of these dogs, is they all do tend to be a little bit barky. You remember how much Larry barked when he, when he got here? Oh, yeah. Just bark, 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 bark. You know what I'm saying? And another thing that kind of has happened is they're pretty needy. So, like, uh, Larry, he'll follow you around. He's got to go. Let's check a wine runner. Like, you got to go to the bathroom, he's got to go to the bathroom with you. You're going to get in a shower, he gets in a shower with you. You're getting in the car, he's getting in the car. Now, what's the good point of that? Uh, you don't ever have to worry about him running off, right? Because he's going to be in the bathroom with you. <laughs> and really, to be honest with you, like, if you take advantage of that, you don't even have to worry about him doing anything bad in the house because, like, he's always wherever you are. So that's pretty good. We like that. Uh, what else do I like about him? Like, this, here's one of the funny things about, like, uh, Labrador Retriever purists is they all are like purist as it relates to the things that they see that they like in the breed and then they have a tendency to brush or to kind of brush away the things that they might not like. Now, so this dog, man, if I had to bet my house on it, would I say this dog has some Weimaraner in it? Uh, yeah, I, I would, right? Uh, does that necessarily matter to me? Nah, I mean, I don't know. I breed dogs that like to fetch. These dogs, I've never seen one that really like to fetch as much as would meet my standard. So that's why I wouldn't get one, not so much for the coat color. Uh, Things I like about them, look at it, show them that eye, Eli. One of the things you'll see with Labrador Retrievers nowadays, especially what they call English bred dogs or show bred dogs, is they have ectropian eyes, right? Their, their eyes, like they're, they're saggy. Like, see, let me see if I can make this one sag. See that? Like you'll see a lot of real fancy Labradors now, by the time they're two or three years old, that they're, and when we take them out in the field and stuff, they end up getting uh, like seeds in their, in their in, oh, nope, 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 don't go anywhere. Uh, they end up getting seeds and stuff in their eyelids. Uh, now, what Larry's saying right now is, Tony, why are we standing out here <laughs> under the sun when we could be over there under the shade? So you have to bear with him if he didn't want to be up there. Okay, uh, so that's the thing I like about these Silver Labs. They almost all have nice, tight eyelids, right? Now, so what's something that I don't like about them? Show them this uh, coat. Now, their coat, if you could, uh, you, I want you to look at this coat, and you can see how it kind of looks rough. Hey, Mr. No Name, come here, up, 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 come on, come on, come on, uh, up, 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 get up there. Now, you look at Mr. No Name's coat, you see how smooth and silky it looks, okay? These dogs are prone to, oh, you get down, you get down. These, these dogs are kind of prone to coat uh, problems, and uh, one of the things is, uh, I think it's called uh, dilute, you know, and you, you had to double check me on that, but I think that's what it's called. Uh, and their hair will actually, especially along the back here, you know what I'm saying, and underneath, it'll just kind of, uh, as they mature, it'll get real thin, you know, and sometimes even kind of fall out. And they have a lot of dander, you know. So, like, a lot of times with these silver labs, like, you can pet on them, and, like, like you just notice, like, man, that's getting thin right there. And then as you're, uh, like, petting on them, it's like dandruff. They got a lot of dandruff. So, again, if you have, you know, if you have uh, bad allergies, then, like, these dogs can really affect them, you know. You can have a dog like mine who has a super oily coat and sheds a lot of hair, but he doesn't shed dander like, say, these kind of dogs do. Now, not all of them have it, right? Some of them don't have it, and some of them, when you, when you touch their, their coat like this, it really, it, it feels pretty decent. But they're all kind of rough. There's no silver lab that I've ever seen that has a coat that's like a good black lab or a yellow lab's coat. So, again, that's another difference. I've always chalked that up to them being part Weimaraner, you know. Uh, but is, do I know? No, no, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's an interview uh, that you can download uh, from a guy who, like, uh, in the 50s had the, there was only two kennels that kind of started producing these breeds. And the guy makes a very compelling argument of how the uh, genetic testing shows that these dogs are really uh, just chocolate labs that have recessive genes as it relates to uh, the diluted coat color. So I don't know, but I can tell you this, they almost all have nice tight uh, eyelids and they almost all have coats that uh, they're not the best coat in the world, you know, and it's, it's like I was telling you with those golden doodles and the golden doodle uh, uh, puppy size adventure video, 
it's something that you have to touch to understand. When you touch this dog, you would most certainly understand what I'm talking about. So what I wanted to show you, like, uh, is like we're just going to kind of have uh, this dog and my dog who are pretty similar in age, right? And so you can kind of see the size differences. You can kind of see the head shape. Now there's a noticeable difference between the head shape of uh, Larry and the head shape of a bench bred dog. Right? So like if you're used to seeing bench bred dogs uh, or, or uh, English bred dogs, when you look at this dog, yes, he's going to look a little bit more like a bird dog. Uh, and it's going to like, you're going to, you're just going to have a tendency to look at them and see why I'm Rainer. I'm going to tell you. But like if you look at Mr. No Name, he's got kind of old long snout and he also kind of has long ears. Everybody's always talking about these, uh, these uh, uh, silver labs having this long kind of Weimaranery thin pointed ears. Well, you know, look at Mr. No Name. If Mr. No Name was silver colored, if I spray painted him silver, then him and Larry start to look a little bit more similar, okay? So like I see lots and lots of English lab puppies. I mean, I do a lot of them a month. Uh, so I get one of these guys come out here and I look at them and man, that Weimaraner, it pops right out at me. But you see some of these uh, field bred dogs, American bred labs, and you think, well, what if I was to like erase some of that color out of him? Would it really be that different? So a lot of you guys who have made up your mind about how these dogs got to be this uh, color, Maybe you don't know exactly as much as you think. Maybe you do. I'm not saying you don't, but maybe you don't. So, like, so this is how they kind of look. And as we're walking them, you can kind of compare sizes. Now, I'm a really small person, so sometimes it makes the size comparison seem uh, uh, not right. My son, George, he just now turned 13. Today's his birthday. Happy birthday, George. Uh, so he's about 13 years old. He's kind of small for a 13-year-old boy, uh, uh, but, but kind of not that small. Now, these dogs, as you watch, that kind of watch them walk, kind of watch them move, kind of watch how many treats we have to give them because it is hot out here, and when it's hot, you got to pay them a little more and see if you think that there's a lot of difference. Now, what we're going to be talking about, come on. What we're going to talk about, see, look, Larry starts to drag him. I bring this little bit of dog crack out. He'll get fired up. Uh, as, we're, as we're walking around here, like you'll notice the movement patterns. They're not all that dissimilar from each other. Now, one of the things you will notice is these silver labs, I have yet, come on Larry, up, up, up. I have yet to meet a particularly coordinated one, you know, okay? Larry has fallen off of this dog walk uh, <laughs> 5,000 times, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so when, uh, like we always had tried to master the short dog walks, the small dog walks, uh, before we move over to the taller ones, because we don't want them falling off the taller ones. But uh, he, had a, he had a lot of problem with all of our small challenges course. And uh, I've trained a fair amount of these, right? You know, there's only seven or eight bloodlines of these dogs. So nobody, from my perspective, is a true expert on them uh, because everybody that's an expert kind of has a tendency to be an expert on a given bloodline. In other words, they breed those dogs or they've bought dogs from those bloodlines or maybe they train because they have a relationship with the breeder. But I think I've pretty much seen dogs from uh, most, if not all, of those bloodlines. And across the board, I would say we have problems with their body awareness, with their, with their proprioception. Uh, they also seem to get fatigued uh, a little bit easier than, say, dogs like Mr. No Name. No, not, but no different than the American, uh, uh, the uh, English bred dogs, the show bred dogs, but they, they don't seem to have as much basic endurance as these dogs that are bred to do field trial work hup, hup, or go hunting a lot. Also, what we notice. And we're going to show you here in a second, we're going to get the dummy launcher out. I have yet to run up on a silver lab that was a super good fetcher, you know. Uh, I mean, I've, I've run up on them that like to fetch, run up on a lot of them that like to fetch in the air conditioner, like when your hallway or in your corner. But when we go to making that transition from doing, uh, you know, fetching work in a real controlled environment uh, out to a high distraction environment, especially if the conditions are physically demanding, uh, I haven't seen one that could keep up, right? But if you're buying uh, a silver lab, let's just be honest about why you're buying them. You're buying them because you like the way they look. Why'd you buy this dog, Jake? For the color. He, for the color. He, he bought him because the way he liked to look. And you see people do that with shoes all the time, right? You know, I mean, how many people do you see wear cowboy boots in the middle of the summertime? It's the most uncomfortable shoe ever designed besides a high heel, right? It's an awful shoe. And people wear them all the time. It drives me crazy. Uh, so... Here is just like, uh, you know, we're on the small challenges course. Was there any real difference? Uh, stay there, guys. Was there any real difference in how those dogs negotiated the small challenges course? You know, uh, do we need to turn them around, Eli? Let's turn them around so you can get a better look at them. So I'll turn, get my dog. Hey, come over here, though, Eli. Let, let me show you right here. See, look at this. 
this, just get in here on this. This is what we run into with these dogs a lot. These little rashes and stuff, and we have to treat them and medicate them, right? Uh, and, and you just do not run into that with the, with the black dogs, hardly ever. All right, turn him around here, and we'll turn this one around so we can look at him stay. Now, we get over here, and uh, like, look, we just did all the same things. Those dogs know the same basic vocabulary, but I'm pretty sure that when you're watching this video, you're going to see a little bit, uh -uh, sit. you're going to see a little bit of Weimar in, in Larry. There's no way around it, uh, but who, who knows? But either way, they did the same stuff, right? They're about the same size. Uh, they're really not that, you know, that, that hard to get to do things. Henry's having a little bit of a hard time because he's black and he's soaking up this 90 degree sunshine right now. But all in all, they're very similar dogs. And for a regular family that just likes a dog, they like it because it look how it looks and they want it to be good with the kids and they want it to be good with the other animals, you know, I'm pretty confident that Larry is going to be, you know, basically the same kind of house dog that my dog is. It's just in the other areas where Larry is going to uh, fall apart. All right, you guys go get in the shade. Now, uh, that kind of brings us to this other thing. So you're buying a dog. What, what are the considerations of buying a dog? Well, number one, uh, you know, is, is it going to be a good dog for your family, right? So if you like the color and you like that uh, moderate energy level, you like that moderate endurance, you like that, you know, these dogs, uh, Eli, wouldn't you say it takes uh, Larry two or three times as long to recharge as it does, uh, say, these uh, Mr. No Name or these other field bred dogs that are out here? I'd say so. So what we have to do here when we're working is we have to put these dogs on a schedule. And so we have certain things that we have to accomplish. And then we have to give them a certain amount of rest uh, before we can tackle that session and repetition scheme that we have designed for them for the week. So when we have a dog like my dog, we work them, put them up for a minute, uh, they charge the batteries up, work them, put them up for a minute. Now, so, uh, let me see. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> so listen, to drive this point home about energy regulation, I had to go get this guy. <laughs> so let's see if you can look at his face, Eli. Uh, <laughs> Guys, what do you think about that? Oh my gosh, this is an awesome dog. But one trip up my hill <laughs> in the morning time, and listen, we literally have to let this guy rest for hours. Now, so when you buy a big old dog like this, you buy them so you don't have to walk them far. You know, they're just kind of a big, lovable, sweet looking, orange, oh, a good baby. It makes you want to get down here and like really, like just hug them and squeeze them and, you know, smush them up. Okay, but this guy here, his energy level. Makes it tough on a dog trainer because you can only get a very few sessions per day and in every session you only get a very few repetitions, right? Say with a dog like my dog, hey, you can get as many repetitions as you want, okay? I mean, basically, if it's winter time, you can't even hardly make them tired. Uh, now, again, another dog it's hard to make tired. Oh my gosh, come on. Uh, is this guy here? Look, so, like, if you get a dog, oh my gosh, you're a very fine animal. And you want a, you want a dog that you can do lots of stuff with, well, you get this dog, you know, and uh, with Malinois too, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of that kind of argument with Malinois about appropriate coat color, appropriate conformation size, uh, overall build, things like that. Okay, good. But I've had lots of these dogs and uh, to be honest with you, as uh, long as they like to chase and bite stuff, I was pretty happy with them. So with your lab, when you start to think, most labs, what do people want? Well, they just want a dog that's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be good looking because everybody likes to get compliments about how their dogs look. They want a dog that's going to be, uh, you know, fun to be around uh, at a barbecue, fun to be around when the kids are over. Um, okay, well, Silver Lab can do that too. Um, but it, you want a dog that's going to be a great field trial dog? I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen any, right? You want a dog that you're going to be able to fatigue uh, without having to take on a walk? Because the great thing about like a, a dog that likes to fetch a lot is you can go out and like with this dog or my dog, you can go out in the yard, you can sit in a chair and get you a little chuck it and you can just throw a ball or here, you can get out of the sun. You, you can throw a ball or whatever you want and um, like they'll exercise themselves. You know, so like I can just come out here. If I just only had labs here, just get one out, sit down, throw the ball. That silver lab, he's going to look at me. You'll see it here in a minute because we're going to dummy launcher out. He's just going to look at me like, hey, you, you look like you're having fun, you know, <laughs> throwing that ball. But uh, as far as just coming over here, look, Larry comes over here, get in a position, does great with food work. They have tremendous appetites. It's friendly, he's outgoing, it's a good size. Uh, so the last thing you think about when you're buying these dogs is price. Uh, and are they a little bit more expensive than the other kinds? Uh, yeah, you know, they are. Um, I, I think you look at spending anywhere from, uh, say, on the low end, maybe $1,250 to on the high end, uh, $2,500 or $3,000. Back up there, Eli. 
And you might say, well, when you look at this dog to you, he's worth three or four or five thousand dollars because that because when you come home from work, when you see him, the way he looks like makes you feel a certain way. And, and don't lie. Listen, I know all of you out there are going to make comments or send me emails. Stoney, I don't care about how dogs look. That's not true. You do. You care about how your shirt looks. You care about how your car looks. You care about how your makeup looks. If you didn't care, you wouldn't wear it. Right. So when you go to buying a dog, you cannot escape. And you can see this in my, I talk about this a lot in my How to Pick a Perfect Puppy video, but you cannot escape the fact that what drew you to the dog originally was the way it looked, you know? And sometimes, uh, you know, it might be that you saw a, a dog and it looked sad, or sometimes it looked happy, or sometimes it looked super buff, or sometimes it's just the coat color variation. But Jake, what, when you're, when you're thinking about getting a dog, what, you know, why'd you, what was the thing made you click on that dog? Yeah, well, just no, just that, that kind of dog. Um, well, because I've had labs before because he was silver. Right, see, so what Jake said is that he was, uh, you know, he was thinking about getting a dog, and he had had some labs before, so he knew that he liked labs in general for what he was going to do. Uh, right, Jake's, uh, he was in the Marines, he works out of town, he's got a family, so he needed a dog that's going to be good for the family and not too high maintenance, right? Uh, if Jake would have bought a dog like mine, it would have drove his wife crazy for the time that Jake's out of town. So he said, well, I need a kind of a, you know, a moderate energy level dog, one that's still friendly and outgoing, but man, look at that one. It really looks good, right? And for whatever reason, Jake thinks that dog looks good. So whether that dog is mixed with a wine browner or whether it's uh, the result of spontaneous mutation or whether, uh, you know, there was some hidden genes that, you know, because that's how it is, guys. Right? So, you know, you, you think you know who, what do they say? Uh, mama's baby. <laughs> daddy's maybe right there's a lot of that that goes on in the dog business there's a whole lot of mama's baby daddy's maybe in the dog business okay so even are you purist out here that think that you guys have the most pure lab bloodline that traits traces right back to 1917 or or, be, or before right look things happen in the dog business i know i've been in the dog business my whole life so you might not want to go to check in that genealogy too closely with those dna kids because you might be disappointed right okay all right now we're going to actually go do some adventuring we'll take my dog and we'll take uh larry with us and we'll see like what's the difference in daily activities because you've already seen both dogs can be here on my property with 30 other dogs which most of those dogs are under the shade right now both of them uh, can be around kids and adults both of them can master a basic vocabulary what do we use come let's go hup easy wait stay both of them can be calm polite and attentive right uh, both of them have you know the ability to have good basic proprioception even though Larry's is not as you know well developed naturally as my dog but they they're both able to get through all the exercises so now we'll just go do some stuff with them in real life and uh, we'll see if that, uh, it, those similarities persist uh, or if they don't. Good. All right, guys, uh, continuing with our theme of highlighting the differences between this silver lab and the other types of labs, uh, we're fixing to do some dummy launcher work. And so before we do the dummy launcher work, we figured we would get these dogs in here and kind of wet them down a little bit because it is hot. It, it went from being 90 degrees, now it's up around. No name. Come here, buddy. It's up, up around 93 or 94 degrees, and like, uh, hey, come here, buddy. Uh, you gotta remember, dogs, they can't sweat. They don't dissipate heat very well. So a lot of times, like, uh, we fooled around and let it get a little bit late here, so it's about noon, and the sun is directly overhead, and uh, so we wet these dogs down, cool them down, and then as that water evaporates, it takes some of the heat with them. But that brings us to one, here, come here, Larry. That brings us to what we're gonna talk about uh, next. So we're gonna go out here, we're gonna do these, uh, we're going to work the dummy launcher. And you're going to see that, no, Larry, uh, you know, he does not fetch like these other two dogs. You know, unless he surprises me, which we've had happen before. I always say something in the dog business. Anytime you say something's going to happen or not going to happen, the dogs love to prove you wrong. But I don't think Larry is going to go to quite as much uh, effort to do the retrieving as, say, this dog here. Right? So is that a big difference? I don't know. How many people that have Labrador retrievers really get out and do a whole lot of fetching with them? You know, uh, I think that's going to kind of highlight a difference between him and these two. But I mean, so far, what differences have you really noticed? Uh, you know, I got Larry out and we walked the course. He has a, you know, fine vocabulary, he has fine physical skills. Uh, maybe not quite as good as Mr. No Names, but I mean, good enough to go, right? Like you've been on sports teams before. Uh, is everybody the same, uh, you know, as it comes to performance levels on a sports team? No. Does that mean they can't be on the team? No. Everybody can have a role to play. Uh, and then, you know, we're going to go out back and do some stuff. 
And one of the things that you'll really notice, like, you know, when people uh, uh, talk about problems with these dogs, is when I bring up the stuff about the ectropian eyes, guys, look at this eye set. So we're going to go do some adventures. It's going to involve being in some brush and stuff. When I get back to the kennel, I'm not going to have to do anything special to Larry. Whereas with a lot of these bench bred dogs, uh, they're so kind of, they got, you know, those nice square heads and they're kind of big. But a big problem that you get, man, is every time we go out, you know, their eyes are kind of doing this, right? Show them, Eli. That's, you, and you'll see that a lot, right? Well, guess what gets in there, guys? Seeds and uh, vegetable matter, just all kinds of stuff. So we go out and uh, we work the dogs, then we've got to come in, and when we're doing our cursory physical exams, we had to look in their eyes, then we had to take the saline solution and wipe out their eyes. I haven't seen yet, I haven't seen not one silver lab out here at the kennel that had, uh, you know, those real saggy eyes. Now, are they out there? Again, I'm not an expert, I don't know. So don't send me a thousand pictures of, uh, you know, silver labs with droopy eyes. And now, about this coat, right? Like, even when this coat gets wet, it does feel different, you know? Uh, and, and is that alopecia? I might have called it propecia earlier. You know, I get confused sometimes when it comes to words. Uh, not that smart. But, like, uh, is, is, you know, is that a big deal? Uh, no. He's got enough, uh, he's got enough coat. Show him this coat here. Eli. He's got enough coat so that, like, uh, he can protect his skin from uh, all the, you know, the briars and stuff that's out there to a large degree. And uh, he's got enough coat that he can stay warm uh, in the, in the wintertime. So, you know, that coat problem, I think you just look and ask a breeder if they have problems with that. And, you know, given the option, would you buy a dog uh, that, that has a tendency towards that, to developing that, that dilute uh, alopecia? No, don't, right? But is the dilute alopecia any worse than dogs that have really saggy eyes? I don't know. I mean, how do you... How do you balance those things out? So there's just some more stuff for you to think about. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go over here and do the dummy launcher. Ammo. Now see, Ammo's really hauling, despite being a little overweight. Good boy, Ammo! Very nice. Now you can see him watch as he runs down here. Like, uh, like <laughs> there's a lot of Ammo moving around there, but good. And so he's hot, he's tired, and it's humid, but still he has a lot of vigor to go get the other one. Ammo, fetch up. So he's going to run out there, and he's going to get it, and he's going to come back. Good boy, Ammo! Very nice. Oh, what a good boy. Get around here. And so we'll turn it around so you can see him. And now look, this is ammo. Uh, get around here. So this is ammo being out of shape, being in the middle of summer and super hot, but he's still got enough drive to go and get these things multiple times. Even when he messes up, he's like, uh, okay, well, I'll try harder. I'll do it better next time, okay? And, I, you know, I didn't make him have that, right? That's just kind of how he came. My dog's the same way. I'll go get him right now and show you. Good. There's our first dummy. It's gone. Now, the thing to remember, guys, when you're doing this kind of stuff, dogs that really like to fetch, they're going to mess up more often because dogs that like to do the movement exercises, well, look, they, uh, they don't like to be still. And so that's why you'll notice I've got this little tab leash on the dog uh, just to keep him from uh, breaking and giving me a hard time. And here goes our second dummy. And then I'm just going to let him go. Uh, no, no. Good. Now, it's good effort. Come on, buddy. Come on, good boy. Very nice. So hard out, hard back. Good boy. Come around here, get into position. Good. Don't him. And even in this heat, you'll notice like he takes right off after that second one. Guys, it's hard. I mean, if you don't believe it, go out in the 95 degree heat and you run about 50 yards and then turn around and see how excited you are to do it twice in a row. Good boy. Come on, come on. Come on, good boy. Very nice. Hey, and then what I want you to think about, let me get him in position here. Uh, not only do you need to, uh, <laughs> uh, get around here. Not only do you have to go run, but you have to go run uh, while you hold something in your mouth. Okay. And uh, believe me, it's not that much fun. Okay. So uh, whenever you think about like doing your dog training, especially if your dog's messing up and it's hot, 
don't be so quick to externalize that blame onto the dog, right? Uh, if you're not willing to go out and show that dog how fast you'll run for 50 or 100 yards. Okay, so now we have Larry and we're gonna look at the same thing. We're just gonna see, you know, what's his uh, basic reaction to the dummy launcher. Now you'll see he's got a nice stable temperament. That didn't bother him a bit. Look, you see, okay? Okay, Larry. <laughs> And that's what we get every time we try to play fetch with him. He's just like hey, whatever and uh, we brought Larry out here a hundred times and uh, Shot the dummy launcher and he's watched these dogs chase the dummies, you know 500 times uh, 600 times 700 times who knows and every time the reaction is the exact same He doesn't have any go over and show him what he's doing Eli Look he went over there and got him a piece of grapevine and he's chewing on it and playing with it, right? So that the, the gunfire the noise didn't bother him a bit uh, he doesn't care about it, not, not even the least little bit. So, you know, you can take him somewhere, there's some fireworks or there's some shooting going on. You can take him to skeet range. He's perfectly cool with that. He'll sit on the bed of your truck, drink some beer with you, hang out, you know. But uh, when it comes to, you know, going and retrieving and working real hard, he's like, nah, you know. But, uh, but you know, honestly, guys, I mean, th that's par for the course. You know, Larry, uh, he's a silver lab that doesn't particularly love to fetch. And he does love sticks. You know, he loves to chew on sticks. Okay. And I give him that stick, and he's perfectly happy to come out here and chew on that piece of grapevine while these other dogs fetch. Right? But he's not the only one. You know, there's lots of dogs that come here are like that. You know, so, you know, so the knock on the Silver Labs is not being the best retrievers. Okay, that applies across the board. There are a lot more labs that aren't great retrievers than are great retrievers. Okay, so like just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, would you be able to go out and have a good time with Larry? Your kids are playing soccer. He's not after the soccer ball. Uh, even taking him hunting. You want to take him hunting? You can take him hunting and he hangs out and uh, doesn't do anything he's not supposed to do. Right? <laughs> doesn't fetch any birds, but he doesn't bother anybody. He'd be a great hunting companion. He's kind of like that buddy of yours that uh, can't shoot straight. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, we knocked out our vocabulary work. We knocked out our exercise with small challenges work. Uh, we did a little retrieving just to highlight the differences between the dogs. Now we've made our way up to downtown Winchester, Vegas, right? <laughs> All right, show them where we are, Eli. Now we're in the middle of a relatively urban environment. I mean, not super urban. That's Jake. That's Larry's owner. Wave, Jake. <laughs> Jake's been trying to stay off the camera all morning like he's wanted by the FBI. But we're going to walk around out here in this field. Come on. And as we're walking around, we're going to do, you know, a little puppy-sized adventure. And what you'll notice is like uh, these dogs, they're both, look, I'll drop both of their leashes and they're both staying with me. Now, to get these dogs to pay attention in this high distraction environment, okay, I've got to have two things, right? I've got to have dog crack for my dog, which is a dummy because he loves to fetch. And then I have to have dog crack, which is actually dog crack for Larry. Oh, Larry, because Larry loves dog crack, right? So as I'm walking around out here, I can kind of hold my dog's attention with the dummy, right? And Larry's uh, hold his attention with the dog crack. So is that a big difference? Is that a lot of trouble? No, it's not much trouble for me to have a retrieving item with me and let that dog understand that if he'll be calm, attentive, polite, he'll follow along, that he'll have access to the retrieving item. Is it a whole lot of trouble with Larry because these silver labs, they love to eat? Is it a whole lot of trouble to have a little bit of dog crack on me to pay him for staying close? No, it's not any trouble at all, you know? So I'm just walking. Come on, Larry. Larry. Oh my gosh, and Larry's smelling around back there because remember, <laughs> we're up here by a burger joint and there's no telling, you know, how many kids have walked in this field, played, dropped uh, french fries and, and pieces of burger and stuff. So now that's one thing you'll have to watch for, guys. Like, I don't really have to worry about my dog too much coming out here and like picking food up off the ground. He wasn't very hard to break of that, okay? But uh, like these silver labs where they got that tremendous appetite. No name. Uh, they can be a little harder, so you had to put a little bit more effort into it. But look how this dog is just following around with me. And uh, so this makes it pretty easy to bring him out and exercise him. I can come over here. Now, if I want uh, my dog to investigate uh, this woods here, all I have to do is toss this dummy off in there. Now, look at Larry. Larry says, uh, why would I want to go in those woods? <laughs> so I've got to go in the woods with Larry. Okay, but not a lot of difference. Oh, let me see that. Come on, Larry. Oh my gosh. Let's go investigate. Now guys, this is just in the middle of the town where I live. That's what I'm always telling you about. Just because it's not an adventure to you does not mean it's not an adventure to your dog. So we can walk in through here. Come on in here, Eli. I'll hold this for you. 
and we're just kind of walking around, moseying around. Look at this. And we've already run up on a creek back here. I mean, how neat is this? You know? Just kind of walk back here. And you know how I, you know how I'm always a stickler about environmental socialization. Look, we've got Look at all this stuff. You know how I'm always doing this in my backfield. Smell it, pick it up, feel it, taste it. You know, now you don't really have to taste it. But look at this little drainage ditch here. There's drainage ditches everywhere. That's kind of sandy, silty stuff, you know. And these dogs, they're just kind of hanging out with us. And uh, we're walking down through here. See if you can see Larry there. Look at Larry. He's on safari, guys. Look at him. He's smelling and, and knocking around and feeling the temperature differences and the textural differences. Okay. Come on, dogs. All right. And uh, so, you know, a puppy-sized adventure, it doesn't take forever. So we got down here, we had some experiences, and now, uh, Eli, if you'll swing around behind me, uh, now we'll, you know, we'll move right on out of here. And now we'll go over here, and while the kids are eating, these dogs can sit down and be still and quiet. And uh, it's, you know, big time fun for everybody involved. And how long did that whole little adventure there take, Eli? About five minutes. Five minutes at the most, guys. And, you know, that's about how long it takes to get a burger over here at the burger place. And uh, so swing on out that way, Eli, because of the sun. So look, the kids went in to get the burgers and the ice cream and whatever they're getting. We run out in this field. We throw the dummy a few times. Uh, we walk around. We go off in the woods. We find us a drainage ditch. We get a lot of different smells, a lot of different uh, 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 textures. Uh, you hear a lot of different sounds. Right? And now we're headed back over here to, uh, you know, eat a hamburger. I mean, it's, it's, everything's perfect. And all we're doing is squeezing all that stuff right into our normal daily activities. And you'll see, basically, hey, Eli, did that silver lab, did he do, you know, pretty much the same thing that my dog did? Pretty much. Pretty much the same thing. Only difference is, didn't really like to fetch as much. Larry, come on, dude. Oh, my gosh. So remember, guys, dog crack for my dog, right, and real dog crack for El Lero. Good boy. Very nice. Okay, so we've positioned the dogs in the shade on the side of the building. And guys, that's super important. Always remember when it's in the summertime, your dogs need shade, okay? They need shade a lot more than you because they can't sweat. All right, so back up, Eli. Show them what the dogs are doing. Everybody has their food, you know? Now, uh, listen, I know you guys have talked, heard me talk about this before. And uh, no, at Cabin Creek Kennel, we typically do not promote the consumption of fast food, but we have some fine visitors up from Campbellsville. <laughs> and uh, people from Campbellsville love fast food. So we brought them up here. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. Now, uh, but you see those two dogs are sitting over there. They're being good. So we just went on a little micro puppy sized adventure and the silver lab went and the black lab went. I had to use a little bit of food to help the silver lab stay motivated. And I had to use the dummy to help the black lab stay motivated. But they both went on the adventure. They both had a good time. And now uh, back on up Eli and show them, give them a big broad view. You know, we got people coming, people going over and throwing stuff away. Like, uh, we just, we're just living a regular lifestyle here. And as we're living our regular lifestyle, look, that silver lab seems to be doing fine. Move over that way, Eli, so, or maybe back this way so you can get a good, uh, good look at them. Yeah, come around this way, look at it from behind, from uh, Jake's point of view. There you go, and then walk up close to them. And you can see, even with Eli walking around, even with the family sitting there eating food, both of those dogs are equally able to sit there and pay attention. We got a fella getting into his truck over there. He's fixing to drive off, you know. And I have the same amount of faith in both dogs that they're going to be able to stay still. Now, the one thing, go on up there and get, get, get close to him again, Eli. The one thing that you will run into if you have a silver lab in public is that more people are going to come up to you and ask you what kind of dog is he? What uh, can they pet him? You know, he's just going to draw a lot of attention. Where I can go a lot of places with my dog and he's just another black lab. And yes, he minds well, but he doesn't draw attention. Everywhere we go with Larry, everybody wants to touch him. Everybody wants to pet him. Everybody. So believe it or not, it's harder for Larry to mind in public than it is my dog simply because more of the public is paying attention to Larry. And so when you have a, you know, a dozen people walk by and they all look at you and ooh and aw and carry on, well then you start to think you're important. And when you think you're important, you don't think you ought to have to stay still. I mean, that just makes common sense. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, knock out this uh, junk food eating and then we're gonna go get us some lumber. All right, so uh, I had a good experience in Lowe's. They cut my plywood exactly like I needed for my shelves. And we're gonna get back to comparing these two dogs. Uh, 
while I was in there, uh, Jake and George were out walking them around, kind of exploring, getting some environmental socialization right here in an urban environment, right here at the lumber yard, right? And then when I come out, you know, I, I've got to load this wood into my truck and I'm going to need some help. So I can't hold my dog on a leash. So we'll see if both these dogs, a silver lab and a black lab, can both stay while we load lumber into a truck. All right, Jake, give me a hand. We're going up over top. Now we just put it right there and slide it in. There we go. So there's one piece, and you got a guy coming around behind us. They're both staying pretty good. We have our second piece. Oh, three of four. Now a truck's coming. And uh, what that truck did is it caused uh, Larry to get up. Oh, and Larry did get up a little bit sooner than this dog, but he was closer to the truck. Come here, get here. Sit, stay. So we'll call that a draw, okay? All right, now we're doing four of four. Now we got another truck leaving. So we're gonna have to move the dogs out of the way so they don't actually get run over. But uh, this is pretty much even. Wouldn't you call that even, Eli? I think so. All right. So it looks like a silver lab can uh, come out to Lowe's and do some environmental socialization and stay while you load your truck about as good as a black lab can. All right, and so we went by the lumber yard. That's the kind of family activity that you have to do with the dog. And now we're at the park. Uh, so Jake and his little girl, they're already up there swinging and we're, we're gonna walk over there and see them. But guys, what I'm trying to make the point of is like uh, we're running errands and both these dogs are doing fine. Now we're at the park and we're gonna do a little playing with uh, Jake's uh, little girl. She's gonna do some swinging. These dogs are gonna have to be still and uh, we're gonna see, you know, what the comparison is like. You know, can they both be calm, attentive and polite while you're doing a family activity? And then since we're at the park, uh, we're gonna try to think about like how we can take advantage of everything the park has to offer, right? I mean, when you come to the park, you obviously, show them this big green space here, Eli. I mean, you obviously, you know, you know parks have fields and parks have, uh, you know, they have swings and they have slides and stuff like that. But every park, guys, has other stuff to offer. And our little park has a nice little creek. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna do a little swinging. And then once we're uh, done a little bit of swinging, then we're gonna turn around and go down here and we're gonna let these dogs play in the creek a little bit. Uh, Jake and Jackie are already over here pre-positioned uh, and so I'm going to have these guys sit and I'm going to have this guy sit and even though it's real hot out here stay you know this kind of stuff it's not like uh, you know it's, it doesn't get too hot so it's pretty pretty easy to have a dog sit on even in the direct sunlight you just don't want to leave them over there for too long but what's going to happen here is uh, we're going to try to get those dogs to stay while we engage in you know a family activity and so here comes Larry he's swinging I'm going to try to catch him good now, you know, just any ham and egg or dog trainer can get a dog to sit and stay while they're swinging. That's not really that big a deal, right? But what we're going to try to do is get these dogs to sit and stay while me and Jake simultaneously dismount, right? And then in the comments below, you guys can score us and tell me who gets the better dismount. <laughs> I'm going to try to catch him because, see, uh, you can already tell I'm getting a little bit higher. You know, so I'm about to slow down just a little bit. All right, now, so we're gonna go on, we're gonna go on three. So I'm gonna come back. One, two, on three is the dismount, switch, three. Oh, listen, I win, I win. Come on, you can play catch up. I stuck mine. I stuck mine. I win. Okay. All right. You did. Okay, Jackie. Now let's go. Uh, let these dogs. They stayed. So let's have a good party time with them. Okay, guys. Come on. Let's run up here. Oh, come on, babies. Let's see if we can get them to climb up here with us. Oh, now maybe a point for the black lab. Come on, silver lab. You can go up there. Dang, that's pretty nice. All right. Wait till I catch you, Jackie, and we'll all go down the slide together. Oh, that, okay. That's why I so look, pile this guy's perfect, and this guy's perfect. All right, so we'll come down behind you. So let me get these two guys so they don't accidentally crush you. All right, and then you go down. Oh, oh, 
And then here, me and these dogs are gonna come down, then Jake. Come on, dogs. Whoa, perfect. All right, Jake, redeem yourself. Good job, very nice. All right, so the score is still about even, right? We did our work at the kennel. We went and uh, we ate some uh, crazy food for lunch. We did a little mini urban adventure. We went to Lowe's. Now we're doing this kind of uh, park adventure. It's looking about even, except that this dog fetches a little better, you know? I mean, that's about, that's about what, the, what we have run up on, right? My dog fetches a little better. Everybody's had a good time. I've had a good time. Jake, you had a good time? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Jackie, you had a good time? Jackie's had a good time. These dogs have had a good time. Both of these dogs uh, have been pleasurable to go out and do adventures with. So now we have one more thing. We're going to go down here and uh, we're going to get in the water and we're going to see if there's any difference in, you know, uh, like their bravery as it relates to trying something new. Which isn't, well, okay, look, so I'm cheating. <laughs> That's really not anything new for my dog. My dog's been in the water about nine million times. So we're going to go down here and uh, both of these dogs have been in the water some, but we'll just see if there's any difference between how they like it. All right, now for our water challenge. We're gonna come down here and this water's kind of deep. And look, they both went in there at the same time. Now I'm gonna get in here with them a little bit. Good, now let's take and let's uh, do this. Hey, look here, Larry. Larry, look at this. No name, look at this. And we'll see if there's any difference. You're gonna have to probably back over that way probably a little bit, Eli. All right, so that's one good fetch for Mr. No Name. Now Larry's going in the water. Let's see if we show it to him. Larry, look at here, dude. <laughs> and uh, no fetch for Larry. Larry came over here to get a treat while No Name's working. But they're both walking around in the water. I mean, not a tremendous amount of difference uh, as far as uh, the exploratory aspect of what we're doing. We're, we're having fun. We're walking around in the water. That's cool. You know, it's just this dog fetches better. So uh, I'll go ahead and get a little bit farther down in this water with them. Now in this water, guys, there's a lot of rocks and there's a lot of things that if a dog doesn't have natural confidence, uh, they won't walk down in this creek. We've, we've walked down this creek a million times. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to walk around. And look, Larry's walking right with me. And like I said, other than the fact that, look, that happens, right? Not a tremendous amount of difference in how they're navigating uh, this particular environmental impediment. And remember guys, this isn't easy. It might look easy on TV, but uh, look, this is all we're walking on, a whole bunch of rocks and stuff. So it takes, uh, these dogs have to be pretty brave because like your foot's turning the whole time you're in this little creek because they filled it up with these rocks so it won't wash out. Well, Larry's doing just fine. Now we get up on this uh, little dam here, and uh, I'll walk out. All right, Larry, uh, you know what I'll do, Eli, is I'll come out where it's hard to get out of this bank, and that'll be our final test. Show them how that bank's kind of steep there. All right, uh, now, so I'm going to try to climb up this bank, and we'll see. Like if either dog can do it or not do it. Oh, come on dogs. Oh, come on Larry, you can do it. Dang. Dang. All right, so that's the end of our, uh, you know, Silver Lab video. And uh, I don't know what this video told you about Silver Labs other than for the most part, they're not that much different than other labs. Now, what's the, uh, you know, overall implication for the breed? If you encourage, you know, more silver lab production, I, you know, I don't know. I don't really get into that. I'm just a dog trainer. People bring me their dogs, uh, help their dogs get to the point where they'll come, be still, have good manners, start off all social situations by being calm, attentive, and polite, and refrain from doing activities that are dangerous, destructive, or rude. And I'm here to tell you that uh, Larry, as he's headed over there to play with his little girl, uh, he's more than capable of doing that, just like this dog is. Now, if you want him to do something over and above that, so you want him to come, be still, have good manners, plus fetch really well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence about that. Somebody's going to have to bring me one that really fetches before I believe it. Oh, and for oh. the record, yeah, I think they were crossed with Weimaraners, but who cares? See y'all later.